How are you guys? Welcome back in. Another episode of Kicking Off is upon us with me, Kevin Egan. Hope you and your loved ones are well. I'm excited, really excited about this week's guest. You know why? Because he's someone who's a tremendous human being who is inspiring. Now, is also incredibly elite at his craft, is one of the best DJs in the world. Afrojack, otherwise known as Nick Van Der Waal, is a tremendous guy. He's inspirational, and when you listen to him speak about what makes him successful, what makes the likes of Messi, Ronaldo, and Zlatan successful, David Guetta in his own field at 52 successful, you start to really think about what you can do on a day-to-day -day basis to kind of help push yourself forward, whether it be a small task that you want to complete in your day or a greater goal that you may have in life. So enjoy the chat today. Thrilled to say we're kicking off with Afrojack. Nick, absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for joining me here on Kicking Off. Firstly, I believe congratulations is in order. Married less than a month by now. Huge congrats. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Does very, it feel a bit weird? Are you, get, are you getting used to it? I, I am very used to it. And, it, and it's actually very, uh, it's very nice to be able to call my girlfriend that I care so much about my wife because it feels a, a bit heavier. And I also, when people introduce me, they say like, oh, this is my girlfriend. I'm like, ah, that's nice. You don't really know how serious it is. Like the wife thing is, uh, is pretty cool. Yeah, it is. I agree on that. And, and for you guys to get married, it's such a tricky time. Uh, I'm sure it was unique, but also you're probably spending a lot more time together, are you, than you ever would have imagined? Uh, we are. Uh, but we're, we're also doing that before, the, before we got married. We uh, had the quarantine when Corona just started, uh, the COVID uh, stuff in March. And we were together in quarantine in Dubai for 60 days. So we really got used to spending time together and it was a lot of fun. Not one single fight or whatever you read about these days that people are going through with quarantine. We were very happy and we had a very nice days. Good stuff. Congratulations. What are you doing for your, your own mental health? Because I think everyone around the world has had to check themselves in some way, whether it's exercise, whether it's, you know, whatever it may be. I see you're gaming a fair bit these days. What is it that you do uh, to keep your mental health in check? Well, first, I, I, I enjoyed the time off. You know, it was like a very, very long vacation. And then over the last few months, I still slowly started picking it up again, started producing music, uh, doing streams, PlayStation streams. Before that, it was just a lot of Legos and not really doing anything interesting with my time. But now it's been a lot of working out uh, PlayStation, making music, working together with people because um, I'm in Belgium now, so I'm working with a lot of Dutch people. I have a lot of guests over. It's fun. It's fun. I'm, I'm really active. I just really miss the shows. That's the only yeah. thing that's missing right now. I can imagine for someone like yourself that feeds off that buzz of the show. I, I thank you so much again for, for letting me in to go see your show in Miami uh, a couple of years yeah, ago. Of and it was unbelievable. I mean, the buzz on the night was incredible. So to, to have that missing from your life, I don't think the average person can really relate to that. Well, I, I don't think the average person can relate to how it is to have that life. So I'm already lucky that I had it. Yeah. But yeah, it's definitely like just having everything you do, you live for, just get completely stripped away. But a lot of people never even get to experience what I got to experience over the last 10 years and doing what I love for a living. So I don't feel that anyone is in a position to complain. Like there, there's a, there's barbers out there that can't cut hair anymore, and like they, like their income gets cut, and they have serious problems. Like we just don't get to do our hobby for a while. It's like let's let's not complain about this. No, we are still very privileged. Yeah, absolutely. Gratitude. Well said. I want to go back a little bit. When you released your debut uh, studio album, Forget the World, in 2014, you said, quote, it's a message not just to my fans, but also myself to always remember to keep following your heart, keep following your path, and never try to let things around you get you down. Is that something you've been able to live true to? Sometimes. Sometimes it's, it's difficult. Like when you're surrounded by people and everyone says left, and you're thinking right it's like it's very difficult to go right but uh yeah it always worked for me and, and always end of the day like i've been watching uh gary v like on instagram over the last year or two me too and he says it in a very rough way but it basically comes down to it if you don't like it don't do it because you're probably going to become you're probably never going to become as great at it as other people but very important thing if you love something you also have to do the shitty parts of it you know 
So you might love to make music, but you hate putting cables together. Well, the shit thing is, if you want to be able to make music and set up your own studio, you need to know how cables work. Same shit when DJing. Like, it's not just yeah. knowing which songs you want to play. Like, you have to learn the buttons. So you really have to, how you say, you have to work for becoming good at what you love. 100%. Like, you didn't just start a podcast. Like, I love podcasting, but I'm not going to do the technical side. So I'm going to hire a team of 20 people with infinite money to do that stuff for me. It doesn't work like that. You got to know how the camera works, how to record, all this stuff. That's the work. That's the work you got to put into something you love. Man, I love what you're saying because it's so true. When anyone asks me about TV, I always say you have to work behind the scenes first. You have to garner a greater appreciation for how the show works. And when you're finally on camera and something goes wrong in the control room behind the scenes, there could be a fire going on in the control room. Uh, not literally, but you've got a much greater appreciation of how things work then. And I'm sure it's the same for you when, when something goes wrong and you've got thousands of people just loving life right now and something goes wrong, but you understand what's going wrong. It puts you in a better position to succeed. Yes, and it also makes you uh, probably less of an asshole. It's, <laughs> it's, very, it's very easy to think that everyone, like everything around you is very simple, but there's so much hard work uh, and I've really been learning that over the last few years. It's never one person that does the job. It's a full team of people working their ass off 16 hours a day. Easy. So that's always the thing you have to remember. Don't try to do everything by yourself. Build a team around you and share, share the love. Share the work and share the love. You know what? I noticed that when you guys came in to be in sports a few years ago and we had a chance to chat on air, I noticed that a bit about your group. There seemed to be a wonderful little culture and I, I didn't get to know you guys for long at all. But what did stand out to me was just how connected you seem to be. What do you think has been the key for you and, and your rise with your team uh, and the culture within your group? And are there any non-negotiables within your team in terms of trust, communication, uh, those little things that have proved to, so, proved to be very successful? So there's, there's, different teams i have different teams around me i have like a, a personal team that does my agenda my scheduling like uh, washing the cleaning the house and stuff then i used to have a, a more formal management team which which i had a lawsuit with that last for five years that's finally closed and i had my touring team and my touring team is now my full management team they do everything they also do all the music stuff and it's basically uh their company is called two for one and then there's also my label, Wall. And together we do almost everything. And when you ask me, like, is there anything that's not done? The, the only thing that there is, is not being honest. You always have to be honest. And if you think you're better than anyone at any time, you will, you will, you will have a very bad time, basically. And that includes me. That includes me. Like if I ever, if I ever, how you say, like walking next to my shoes, I don't know how, you, how they say it. Like when you're getting a little bit too high big there, you're feeling your yourself shoes, yeah. a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they have very, very tight ways of making sure you, you get leveled again. So I'm really thankful to them for getting me in this position. It's funny you say that now. I'm just looking at a book here that I have in front of me. It's called Good Company. And the owner, uh, the owner of the Atlanta Falcons in the NFL and Atlanta United. Okay. And also, he, he's the guy who started the Home Depot, uh, the largest home improvement store in the world. It's a wonderful book. But he, he's, I had him on the, the show, actually, just a couple of weeks ago. And he I'm spoke gonna, with, I'm going to search for the audio book right now. Good Company. Yeah, Good Company, Arthur Blank. And he spoke about the key traits and, the, and, and, and just the, the philosophy of his company. And he had so many different arms like you to what he was doing. So whether it be the Home Depot or, or then he goes into the NFL, the charitable arms, he just donated $200 million to a, child, to a children's hospital uh, in his name in Atlanta. Phenomenal human being, like an absolutely brilliant person. And he spoke about just those, those small things and where he came from in life and how he insists that his companies are run. And I'd imagine, Nick, at some point when, when you continue to grow, that making sure that everyone follows the principles that you have just becomes that little bit more challenging. Uh, definitely. But it's also a matter of uh, not just setting the principles for your team, but living up to the principles mm -hmm. yourself. You know, so like, for example, we have uh, someone new in the team and she's working on uh, 
she, she works on this estate. It's a gigantic estate and we're building studios and it's like five houses and the horse riding range and all ridiculous shit, but she, she's managing that. So instead of having her manage that, and how do you say, it? like criticizing any wrongdoings, instead try to put yourself in the shoes, figure out where it's coming from and see how you can help her make it better. And this is always the, the mental thing I used to always think that my team works for me and they have to figure it out, but it's actually the other way around. Like you work for your team and by working for them, you make them better and they can do better for you. So every time there's anything happening with one of your teammates, always sit down with them and think with them how they could do it better and how you can make the process better. Like one thing we do, for instance, that's like super, it's the best solution I ever found, checklists. Checklists make life easy. Not just because we're five years old and stupid, so we need a checklist. No, there is actually another book uh, called The Checklist Manifesto by Babatunde something something. And it actually explains if you have a checklist, you don't have to think about it. So when in the morning, when I start up the studio, I have a list of what I need to do. When I do these things, I know everything is running. I don't have to think about it. How many times aren't you stressed about, ah, oh, I don't know, did I do this? Did I do that? Like having things in your head, having checklists will take everything out of your head and put it in paper and you don't have to think about it. You can just do what you want to do. It's crazy. You know, in that book that I mentioned as well, just on what you were saying, Arthur Blank talks about his employees are all associates. So he's never referred to them as employees. He's like, I work for them. Exact same uh, mantra that you've, that you've kind of talked about there. You've worked with some incredible artists, some incredible singers, DJs, producers over the years. And it struck me by, you know, looking at some of them, the longevity and the consistency throughout their career that they've had and that you're having now as well. The likes of David Guetta, um, others, fantastic singers as well. What, what have you noticed about their success that you could, say, you could point to and say, well, that's why they've had such consistency. And I see it with, in football with obviously Ronaldo and Messi playing at the years they're playing. Zlatan is 39 now. Um, what is it about the ones in your industry that makes them so successful over such a long period of time? Well, greatest, fastest example I can give you, I was having a discussion yesterday with uh, one of my teammates and we were talking about one of our artists. He's not working now, he's going on vacation, he's chilling, he's enjoying the first little bit of success, which is great, good for him. But my manager's angry, like my teammate's angry, like he can't do that, like he can go on vacation, but he gotta keep working. And then he said, like, the reason you're successful, he said to me, is because you're still working. And I, I don't wanna be a show off, but I am actually in the studio <laughs> working on music all the time and i'm not just working on music i'm working on ways to try and improve my music and learning new things and learning piano trying to work together with new people doing meetings with radio programmers with publishers with labels yeah. not yeah. because i have to i don't have to do shit. i i'm basically retired but i like it and i want to become better and not just want to become better i want to set how you say, I want to set the path for other people that want to become better and want to become great. And when you say that, when I look in the industry, be best example, David Guetta. Yeah. This guy is still working every day. I don't know what he's doing it for, but apparently he loves it. 52 he's years of age. 52 years. He has a six pack. Who can, <laughs> who, who's 50 years old and says, I'm going to get a six pack? <laughs> so he works out every day. He eats healthy every day. He pays attention to his sleep. He's still in the studio. He's still setting up writing camps. He's still trying to find the newest producer with the newest sound he can collaborate with. He's always on it. Pitbull. Yeah. Pitbull's always on it. I don't know if you ever met him, but no. he's always on it 24-7. And he's also always on uh, Little Shot Vodka. But <laughs> like whatever the combo is to make you hype, these guys are working 24-7. If you talk about the success of uh, Lil Wayne from hip hop, this guy is still making songs and he's still coming up with dope lyrics. It's not a question of how does he do it, it's a question of he's doing it, you know? Yeah. So I think the most important thing that everyone should know 
that wants to become great at something or stay great at something, keep doing it. That's the, that's the most important thing. You're talking about going viral. You will go viral eventually if you're doing great shit all the time. But you have to like try and do great shit. Don't get lazy. Don't do halfway there. You can do it and you can get away with it and you can make some money, but you're never going to be what you want to be. You know what? It sounds so simple. It actually reminds me a little bit of the Johan Cruyff quote about how football is a simple game, yet the hardest thing to do is play simple. And I suppose the hardest thing to do in any walk of life is break through adversity uh, and just keep doing it. Like you said, go with the Nike slogan, just do it and keep doing it. So Nick, one of the things I want to touch on is just reinventing yourself over the years and maybe at certain times in your career, knowing when you have to adjust. You talk about your team saying you have to all go, you have to go left and you're thinking, no, I have to go right. How challenging is that, that self-reflection to say, okay, I now need to go into this path or stay where I am, keep going straight. Like, is that something you think about or does that just come naturally to you? I think it's something everyone always has to think about. But one really important detail there is you have yourself as a person and you have your brand or your job. So if you're a soccer player and you think like, well, I really want to play for this club because that's how I want my life to be and it might not be the best career move, that's a choice you can make. For me, when I'm in the studio and I'm making music, I can choose to follow the hype or I can choose to do what I want to do or I can do a little bit of both. When you're talking about what's good for the longevity of the brand, Initially, it's look at the hype, understand the hype, understand where people are going and try to, how you say, adjust yourself slightly to it, but still be you. Change your jacket. It's basically like you're changing your shirt, you know? Everyone's wearing a t-shirt. Okay, like I'm still be me, but I'm gonna wear a t-shirt too. Why the fuck not? Yeah. That's one. The other one is personally, if everyone starts listening to jazz now, and I really don't like jazz, I could also start making jazz, but then I would fuck up my own brand for me because I wouldn't like my own brand anymore. And I would stop being interested in making music because it's jazz in a year or two. So I would enjoy some slight success of joining the hype. And then in two years, I would be bored of it and I would completely stop. Yeah. Or I would fall back to doing what I love and then I have to pick that back up again. So it, End of the day, this shit doesn't even really matter. You just got me thinking about a guy in the US soccer community, a podcaster, a prominent podcaster, who's had cancer for the last few years and has headed into hospice care. And I've been thinking more about life over the past three or four days than I think I've ever done in my entire life. And maybe it's becoming a dad, maybe it's just getting a little bit older, but the meaning and enjoying what you do, enjoying who you're surrounded with, just seems more important than ever before. Maybe it's quarantine. Maybe it's, like I say, just getting older or knowing that it could be gone at any point. So what's the point in doing something that you don't enjoy, right? Yeah. Well, and unless you can do something you don't enjoy to fund something you do enjoy, it's, right. it's allocation of time. So uh, the very simple thing in life is, if you want to be a soccer player, kick the fucking ball. Very simple, kick the ball. You kick the ball in the goal, you win. If you don't like kicking the ball, you want to become a basketball player, but you're five foot high, yeah, this is life. You cannot do much about it. Or you can train your ass off to become the greatest basketball player of all time at five foot. And that will make you an average basketball player against the guys that have the seven foot benefit of easy dunking. This is like a physical aspect that life mm -hmm. sometimes prevents you from reaching certain things. But you can always try. But at the same time, like, again, what I'm saying about time, if you want to play basketball, but you're good at kicking the ball, kick the ball once a month so you can play basketball for free the rest of the month. It's the same thing when I make music. Sometimes I make one song that everyone's like, this is amazing. And like, ah, I don't personally really like it. But you know, it pays the bills. And by paying the bills, the other 29 days of the month, I can do whatever the hell I want exactly the way I want it. Yeah, so it. when you're talking about what's important in life, there's basically one measurement is happiness mm -hmm. this is a day and you can be happy or sad and whatever happens afterwards you can never go back in time to change it so just try to be happy all the time and figure out how you can provide that for yourself maybe it's a billion dollars maybe it's a million dollars maybe it's not even so much money money brings a lot of problems with it if, if you 
if if you start making more you start figuring out how everyone is trying to get a piece of it and it gets more difficult and difficult and many times i, I would think wow is it really worth the problems and then eventually i figured out oh yeah it actually makes life a lot better for me and my family and you have to be okay with the negative aspects of anything but this is with anything in life everything has two sides everything is like a magnet is it has poles you know you have the, the the positive and the negative there's always a, the back side to the front side so you just have to figure out where you're focusing on did you uh, did you have any day recently that was just a flashback to your old days before you were rich and famous before you broke onto the huge scene that is uh, music and, and just think well this is such a simple life because what you say is so true i love going back to ireland at times and just sitting in a local pub somewhere having a pint of guinness or going for a run kicking a ball whatever it may be and that offers just such a simple solution to your day that seems to solve all problems oh yeah if you can remember that if you can remember what makes you happy and where you come from, that's easy. But sadly, it's also very easy to lose yourself and forget what you are or who you are. So the best thing to figure that out is go back to where you came from. Think about what you like to do, what you used to do when you were a kid that made you happy and do that. For me, when quarantine started, it was Lego. So I started making shit, shit loads of Lego. We built a truck, we built the Harry Potter castle, we built all types of things. Now it's PlayStation and I always have, my day is always a mix of things I love to do and things I have to do. And every time I do a thing I love to do, it motivates me to do what I have to do because I love what I love to do so much, you know? Yeah. Dude, you're, <laughs> so you're, you're inspiring me here. I love it. Can I ask you briefly about a game that's going to happen next week? Because it brings together two of the greats that have ever played the game of football, Messi and Ronaldo. Yes go head to head again and I'm delighted this is happening because they used to be in La Liga we've got a Clasico on Saturday but next week we see Ronaldo should be back hopefully from uh, quarantine after a positive COVID test taking on Messi with Barcelona their longevity win the game, within the game whether you like the game or not LeBron James just won a championship in the NBA his longevity within the game what do you have to say about those athletes that just continue to do it at such a high level for so long first of all I think they're a great example and I think it's also a great example of changing the definition of longevity to experience. Mm -hmm. Like the reason that they're great is not just because they're, they're top athletes that work out every day and train all the time, but it's also because they have so much strategic experience. So they already know what the young boy is going to do. The young, the young kid might be faster or he might have more stamina. But he already knows all the moves, you know, like these old guys, they know all the moves. They would still whoop most young guys as easy. And I think it's the same thing for, if you look at someone like David Guetta or Tiesto, like Tiesto just released a song called The Business. Very nice song that added to all the playlists. How did he know? And it's such a different song, but because he's been around for 20 years, he's, he's seen dance floors for 20 years. He's just been paying attention and he's still doing it. And we're lucky as DJs or producers, the age doesn't really change our, how you say? It doesn't really change our output. Like when it's physical, it's different. Like you're going to get slower at some point. So I'm super lucky doing what I'm doing. You say that, you say that, Nick, but I've seen you on stage and you give it socks, <laughs> yeah, man. You, you dive all in. But I, yes, and I love that. But I also see other DJs yeah. that are 50 years old and they don't dive in the way I dive in, but they don't have to. And they're still selling tens of thousands of tickets because they, they put out quality product and the show is great. Yeah. You don't have to jump around like a lunatic to do a great show. You don't have to. I like it. It's fun. But love what you do, Nick. I love the way you speak about life. And it's something that struck me straight away when we met years ago. Continue to do that because you're an inspiration to everyone within your industry and beyond. I, I will definitely do my best. Nick, pleasure. Take care, bud. All the best. Thank you. Genuinely, one of the most beautiful things about doing this show so far is that you end up 
going off in a different direction than you had planned and that was certainly the case with Nick talking about certain philosophy books that he's read and his approach to his business and his day-to-day life. Congratulations Nick on getting married recently and best of luck going forward in everything that you do. I greatly appreciate your time. I hope you enjoyed the chat. If you did, please tell a friend and as always, hit subscribe on podcast or YouTube. It does go an awful long way and leave a little rating or a review if you'd be so kind. We'll do it all again next week, guys. Have a great week. Take care. Thank you.